upgrades, upgrades, and even more upgrades. That will be the talk of the weekend in Miami as many teams will bring the first real big upgrades this weekend to make sure they're on top of their own battles. But what can we really expect? Will teams be able to catch up multiple tenths of deficit with just one upgrade? Mercedes certainly hopes so as they will go all out for the Miami Sprint after making a mistake with setup in China. The modification in Park Ferme regulations for 2024 allows teams to make setup adjustments between the Sprint Race and Grand Prix qualifying, which proved disastrous for Mercedes in China. But Mercedes takes a crucial lesson from the Chinese GP Sprint. China represented the first weekend of the new regulations and after having their tweaks backfire at the Shanghai International Circuit, Mercedes technical director James Allison claimed a vital lesson was gained for this weekend's sprint format in Miami. Every weekend you go to, you learn things, Allison said in the team's debrief of the China weekend. It's one of the truisms of F1. It is a learning race, and although you have a factory full of tools, you have a load of computational power, a load of people who are thinking about it. There is no place to learn about the car better than with the car at the track, doing what it's designed to do. We head from China, one of the most famously front-limited circuits to Miami, a track that is more in the rear, limited end of the spectrum, and our challenge will be to make sure we don't try and replay China at a Miami that is a very, very different beast and wants different things from the car than China will. The practical reaction to the lesson learnt is to reverse the script and try the more extreme setup experiment for the less important sprint running. We face the enjoyment of another sprint weekend with this second go of having two bites of the cherry, and we definitely learnt during this weekend that if you're going to be ambitious, be ambitious in the sprint race and then tune it down for the main race rather than the opposite way around," he went on to say. Hopefully we'll land a car in a better place, that the upgrades that we're going to bring to Miami serve us well in a grid that in qualifying at least is really close. Around the part of the battle we're fighting a few hundredths can make a difference sometimes and a couple of tenths would make all the difference in the world. So looking forward to seeing how that all plays out. Mercedes will also reveal the first real updates for the W15 in Miami, and Allison hopes they will help the team to improve its performance. That's of course the challenge that we face in the coming races is to try and move both the setup of the car and also the pieces that we bring to the car so that that's improved," he said. We've got upgrade packages coming to the car but also components that we hope will rectify the underlying balance that is causing us difficulty. Much as it's painful to talk in this way after a weekend like this, I just have to remember that there'll be races in the future when we've executed those things when we're back more on the front foot and when we're progressing where the pleasure of talking about it will be massive and that day can't come soon enough. Hopefully we'll land a car in a better place, that the upgrades that we're going to bring to Miami serve us well in a grid that in qualifying at least is really close," said Allison. Around the part of the battle we're fighting a few hundredths can make a difference sometimes, and a couple of tenths would make all the difference in the world. So looking forward to seeing how that all plays out. Mercedes will be hoping to be back at their best this weekend, but unfortunately for them, they aren't the only one bringing upgrades. McLaren had planned to deliver its first major update batch for the MCL38 in May, and Andrea Stella has now confirmed that the new specification will be available during the Miami Grand Prix. For Miami, we will have finally the first round of upgrades to our car, team boss Stella confirmed in Shanghai. McLaren has begun the 2024 season in promising fashion, tugging at Ferrari's heels and taking the measure of Mercedes thus far. However, with the team realistic about the need for another year of rolling development to truly compete at the top, Miami's upgrading package is the first of several moves in that direction. Not only will the change increase pure performance, but it will also enhance how the car takes care of its tyres, with rear degradation being a crucial difference in this weekend's Shanghai event. These upgrades will also include some attempts to improve tyre degradation, so we will try and see if we can take a step forward," he said. Considering the amount of improvement we should do to get closer to some of our competitors, I would say that we need more than one round of upgrades in terms of helping the behaviour of the tyres. But for everything this is kind of constant development. You never assume that that's good enough when it comes to keeping the tyres in the right operating window. Certainly the next one will be another interesting one from a tyre point of view. Especially if in Miami we have high temperatures like we had previously, so that track becomes quite a bit rear limited, a lot of traction with low speed corners and then acceleration. Stella stated that Red Bull and Ferrari continue to have a stronger grasp on keeping the rear tyres alive, 
with front graining being less of a concern than many had previously imagined. I think the track has actually been quite consistent in the fact that the main limitation is the overloading of the rear axle," he said. This is not a surprise because this track in terms of tarmac, despite the surprising coating, it's more on the Bahrain and Suzuka side. We know we become overloaded at the rear, which some cars cope better than us, for instance Ferrari and Red Bull. In terms of front-end limitations, interestingly, I think since we introduced the wide tyre, there's been much less graining in China than what it was like before 2017. The new upgrades for McLaren will certainly be one of the main topics this weekend. But at the same time, Andrea Stella has stated that the team's improvements for the Miami Grand Prix would be a decent step, but not as significant as those made last season. These upgrades will not be as big as the two that we had delivered last year in Austria and Singapore. But it should be a decent step, like it should be noticeable. I cannot say much more than that, because otherwise we talk about numbers. I would like to keep confidential. But let's say not as big probably as Austria and Singapore, but noticeable. McLaren CEO Zach Brown stated that the team's outstanding record of wind tunnel and track correlation should put it in a good position to exploit the benefits. However, Stella has warned that there may be surprises that arise, and she makes no assurances that McLaren's latest components will bring the anticipated stride ahead. If things correlate with our expectation with the wind tunnel numbers for instance and with the computer simulation, he said, it's always a big if, because even if the heat rate of this correlation has been good over the last 12 months, there's always possible surprises. And one team looking to bring a surprise is RB, as they will be upgrading for the second weekend in a row. This, despite F1's back-to-back -back sprint weekends, which included giving Daniel Ricciardo a new chassis in China. We'll have an update in Miami to help us try to keep surfing on the top of that very edge," team boss Laurent Mekis said. I'm sure our competitors will bring updates as well. There is nothing guaranteed in this group, and only if you nail the weekend will you get to that P10. We've never been confident that we have the quickest car of the five teams at the back. We got it there by half a tenth in Australia, half a tenth Japan, and we missed it by a tenth and a half in China. In the race, we were probably equal, or if not half a tenth ahead, so we've never had any confidence. It's a battle every time. But it's a fantastic exercise for everyone. It's superb training for the team to execute sharp weekends, and you need a strong race from every perspective. It's only by doing that you will get a point. As soon as one of these elements, be it tyre management, strategy or anything falls off the cliff, you will give up that point. What are your expectations? Will some of these upgrades bring the fight back to Red Bull or the top of the bottom five? Let me know in the comments down below. Oh, and don't forget to post your predictions for the weekend. Who are you betting on for the polls and wins?